this day, dear God. We thank you for the Sunday school that's been brought this morning, dear God. Thank you for the singing. We ask that you be with Pastor Matt, dear God, as he brings us the message more than conquerors. Be with him, hiding behind the cross, dear God. Take up this, uh, as we take up this offering, this will be used to the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Christ's name, amen. Everybody loved like he does There'd be a lot 
Aren't you glad God loves the broken ones? I tell you, take your Bible, turn to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. I, I think it's exciting when our songs just line all up, the choir saying, just as I am. And boy, I'm telling you, aren't you glad took, God takes people just as they are? You don't have to dress up for God. You don't have to fix up for God. God's the one that does the fixing, praise the Lord. You just come how you are, and he'll change who you are and turn you into what God wants you to be. And well, I'm so God, glad that God loves the broken ones or I wouldn't be in. A lot of folks meet me and they think I'm a preacher. They think I'm a pastor. They don't know I'm just some sinner that God found and saved by his grace and, and allowed to be able to stand in this place. It's just a pleasure and a, and a privilege. I, I count it an honor to be called a child of God. Romans chapter 8, when we look at verse 31. We're going to read down through verse 39 today. I want to just mention I appreciate uh, those men and those that were involved with the quest uh, this past Friday night. I appreciate Brother Teddy uh, uh, leading that, him and uh, Brother John and Brother John and Brother uh, Tim were there. And uh, the quest was a uh, kind of an outdoor banquet for men. They held it over at uh, West End. From what I understand, it looked like probably 11 or 1,200 people there. And, uh, of course, they had a man come and speak on kind of the outdoor world and all. And, uh, but uh, 23 men gave their lives to Christ. And so it's worth every dime. And so I just appreciate Brother Teddy leading that and the men and, and taking them there and, and getting that going. I appreciate people who are involved to do and to serve the Lord. And uh, what a blessing that is to see those men uh, come to Christ. And we just appreciate that so much. You be much in prayer for our mission as they're out presenting their work today. And uh, Brother Dusty is uh, preaching and presenting that work at a church uh, in the Rock Hill area, so you be much in prayer for them. It's a wonder, it's amazing to have men and people serving all over the area preaching the Word of God today, and we're glad about that. Romans chapter 8, and we want you to look at verse 31. I'm going to read down through verse 39. Uh, the Bible says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also Freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword... And as it is written, for thy sake we are, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today asking, Lord, that you would bless your word. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for the music that we've experienced, Lord, the singing, Lord, the congregationals, Lord, the, uh, the, the specials from the choir. And, and, and Lord, we just ask you, God, now, Lord, to speak to our hearts through your word. Lord, we ask you if that your word would just speak to us, Lord, to give us what we're lacking, Lord, to answer that need in our life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to find in verse number 37, we find the verse that we're preaching today. The Bible says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I want to say this to you today, that if you hadn't noticed, life sometimes can be difficult. I don't know if you've noticed where you live, and I know where I live, that problems prop up all the time. Sometimes people get the idea that being a Christian and serving the Lord is just a bed of roses and everything's wonderful, and from the time you come to know Christ, there's never any problems. I mean, you wake up and there's money in your mailbox every morning, and boy, all the problems go away. Your kids live like they ought to. They don't do anything dumb. They, they live their life the way they ought to. Your wife and husband, y'all just walk around and you never fight and you never argue. Life is just perfect once you come to know Christ. 
But I want to say this to you, that's not how it happens over at my house. That's not the way that we live at my house. Sometimes it's a wonder we make it to church on Sunday morning and I'm the preacher, amen. Life can be full of problems and difficulties. Finances and personalities and situations and things change. And I'm going to be honest with you, you're going to face dis discouragement in your life. You're going to face adversity in your life. You're going to face criticism in your life. You're going to face opposition in your life. But I want to say this to you that Paul said if you're a child of God, that is if you're saved by the grace of God, if you're in the family of God, he said that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ our Lord. That doesn't mean that we're just barely getting by, but that means we're on top. You hear me? That doesn't mean that we just got enough, but we got more than enough. Amen. Friend, I want to say this to you. It doesn't matter where you're from. If you're saved by the grace of God, you're more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. I don't care what your family's like. Some of you here say, Preacher, you don't know my family. That's okay. We all got some like that in our family. Guy told me one time, he said, Preacher, I went to my family reunion. He said, You know, we just don't see our family but once a year. He said, and I got there and I realized why well, we don't see them but once a year. You know, family sometimes doesn't determine who you are. It doesn't matter who your family is. It doesn't matter, by the way, what your past is like. Aren't you glad that God doesn't judge you by your past? Listen, you ought not put labels on people about what their past is like. Friend, I want you to know this, that it got nothing to do with your past or where you're from. You are a conqueror in Jesus Christ if you're saved by the grace of God. It doesn't care what your position's like. It doesn't matter what your finances are, or in my case, are not. It doesn't matter. Some of you broke people got that. You know what I mean. How are your finances? I say, when they get here, I'll let you know how they're doing. That must have, I must be like two, two, there's like three broke people here, and I'm both of them. I mean, what in the world? But you know, I find that sometimes people gauge themselves by what they have or what they don't have. They gauge themselves about what they think about themselves. There's some of you here, you have the worst outlook on you that anybody has. But friend, I want to say this to you. If you're a saved child of God, you're more than a conqueror in Him, and people can't judge you by what you are or are not. I want to give you the definition of what more than a conqueror means. You know, a conqueror is somebody that wins. More than a conqueror? I don't know what that means. All I know is that Paul said, I don't know what to say about it, but all I can say is you're more than a winner. You're more than an overcomer. You're higher than on top. You're above it all. You're more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Boy, I see folks walk around like this all the time. Oh, God. I say, man, if I live like that, I just quit. Now, don't get me wrong. It's been raining so long, I've been starting to walk like that. I'm ready for some sunshine, amen. I mean, I want the sun to peek out. I need it. But, friend, I want you to know that my circumstances and what's going on around me and what's going on in my life doesn't change who I am in Jesus Christ. I'm a winner with Jesus Christ, amen. Don't ever forget that in your life. So many folks are dragging around wondering, well, I just don't know, preacher. I, I just don't know. Friend, I want you to know that if you're saved by the grace of God, you're more than a conqueror in Him. Paul brings about three questions about this idea. He says, if we are conquerors, he's saying, since we are more than conquerors, since we are on the winning side, and listen, church, if you're saved, you're on the winning side. Don't buy into what CNN says. Don't buy into what Fox News tells you. You're on the winning side. Amen. I watch the news, and I tell you, I just have to change the channel. I get so depressed, I can't stand it. They, think, they want me to think that we're losing. Friend, I want you to know I'm on Christ's side. I'm winning, amen. Things aren't getting worse for me. They're getting better every day. And if they're not getting better for you, they can, amen. But I want to give you three questions. Paul says, since you are a conqueror, since you are more than a conqueror, since you're a winner, which is the opposite, Brother Jay, uh, Josh, of being a loser, since you are, he says, what about these three questions? I want you to notice them with me. If you take notes, you can jot them down. If you want to go on our app, we have them there. But verse 31 says, who, he says, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Paul said, let me ask you a question, conquerors. Since you're a conqueror in Jesus Christ, he says, who can challenge you? Who can stand up against you? You're a child of God. You're saved by the grace of God. You're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, who in the world can challenge you? If God's for you, who are you worried about being against you? 
You know what I always tell people? Man, you've got to worry about who's on your side, not what, whose side you're on. I mean, let me give you this. Can I give you this? When I was a kid, I was skinny, little fella, and I had this fella that would frog me all the time. Does anybody know what I mean by frog you? If you've been a boy, you know what I mean. Guys come around, they just frog you. I mean, you'd be sitting on a, hey, they just frog you in the top of the leg. You can't even move your leg. You have to drag your leg off when they get done. I was a little skinny kid. I was about 12 years old. I was going to Victory Baptist Church, and there was this kid named Joey Bird. He would come around. He's a good kid, great kid. He's a great man, preacher, and a principal right now. But he would frog me like crazy. I mean, just lay down on my leg. I'd have to crawl out of the room. It hurts so bad. You know, when he'd do that, you know, I was a little guy. I couldn't do nothing about it. He's a you know, high schooler or whatever. But I had a cousin named Eric. He was a grown man. He's like 18, 19, 20. He was there going to Bible college. You know, when Eric was around, I wasn't worried about getting frogged. You hear me? It didn't, I was walking around going, I wish somebody would frog me right now. You come over here and try to frog me. He will whoop you. You hear me? i never forget the greatest thing ever happened. I was sitting on the front row of the church, and Joey Bird come by, and he frogged me right on the leg. I mean, he nailed me. My leg went numb. Joey went and sat down. My cousin Eric went by and almost broke his leg. Amen. <laughs> I was going to tell you this. I was so happy in my life. You know what I thought for a minute? I got a big brother to take care of me. I'm not worried about anybody. And I want to say this to you. If God's on your side, who are you worried about in your life? There's no need to worry about it. Listen, just tell them, listen, I'm on God's side. And if you've got a problem with God, take it to Him and argue with Him a while. Friend, I want to tell you this. When people argue with God, they never win, by the way. Boy, if somebody don't like the way, our, the way the Lord's working in your life, just say, hey, go talk to God about it. He's the one that started. He's the one that's running it, and he'll be the one to finish it. Friend, I want to say this to you. If God's with you, quit worrying about what everybody else thinks in your life. So many folks tell me sometimes, but preacher, my family don't understand since I got saved. It's okay. Just tell them you're with God. You hear me? Just tell them you're with God. It'll be all right. I mean, just say, look, I'm with God. I got to the banquet, uh, like most preachers do, about 15 to 7 last Friday night. I get there, and you know what I realize? I don't have a ticket. Without a ticket, guess what? I can't get in. I'm out there on the outside. They didn't call me and said, Preacher, you've got to pray at 7. I'm on the outside, no ticket. I can't get in the place. I called a guy that's running it and said, Hey, man, I'm on the outside. Where can I get a ticket? He said, Don't worry about it. I'll send Teddy out to get you. Teddy comes out says, Come on, you can go with me. We walked in the door. You know what I said? I'm with him. I went in. You know, can I say this? You're with God. Everything's going to be all right. You hear me? It's going to be fine. You're with God. If you're not with God, get with God. That's all you got to do. Get with him. You know, David went down to whip Goliath. You know what he was saying?